You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI show where we look at amazing AI to make beautiful presentations with the PowerPoint designer. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI show where we're going to look at the PowerPoint designer. I've got two special guests with us. Derek Priyanka, why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Priyanka and uh, I work on the PowerPoint Intelligence team and I'm really stoked to be here. Fantastic. Derek? Yeah, Derek Johnson. I also work on the PowerPoint team and our goal is to use AI to help people make better presentations. Okay, so I am terrible at design. <laughs> Tell me about the PowerPoint designer, the goals, maybe you can show me what it does because like I see the thing pop up but I never go exploring because usually I'm doing my PowerPoint presentations like the moment before I have to present them, you know how it goes. So tell us a little bit about the project. Yeah, you're not alone with that. We oh. see a lot of people uh, kind of scramble at the last second to pull presentations together. And the problem with that is you're not going to be very effective with your presentation sure. if you don't really focus on how to get that message across. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to use AI, and we use AI all across the company, to figure out how to dial in that message in your slide. Uh, so I want to definitely show you a bunch of examples and kind of dig in. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to unlock the power of the product through AI. Fantastic. So. My guess is that with PowerPoint, there's a lot of different things you can do. Can you give me like some examples of what you can do with it now? Because like, I'm having a hard time visualizing as I'm like a programmer type. Yeah, so I mean, you can do anything with PowerPoint, and that's part of the problem. But if we start talking about some of the AI that we have, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to help you recognize kind of people and photos and make sure we crop them to, to make sure that they're centered. So why don't I dig in here and show it. you some examples. All right, let's go to the screen. Uh, so really timely, a uh, great photo of black hole w was just released. And let's make a project uh, about this. So we're going to do what a lot of people around the world are doing. And we've got our favorite photo here of the black hole. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to drop that photo in. This is just what you, know, you normally do. But we'll see here, it automatically pops up. And it's going to give you all of these suggestions. Uh, so just with a single click here, we've now found this suggestion that's taken my photo of the black hole, figured out how to crop it to kind of make it the center of the action. And we've actually even used AI here to figure out what the right color palette is to make this slide really shine. So I, I've always looked at this on the side, and I'm like, those are those are really nice, actually. Mm -hmm. But I never really thought about the engineering behind it. I mean, yeah. I feel like there's a lot, and we'll get to the engineering because you're gonna yeah. know all the engineering. <laughs> but is there any other features that that go along with? Because it's pretty cool. You put a picture, and then you don't have to do any more work. Yeah, let me show you one more before okay. we have Priyanka kind of talk about uh, how we make it look so effortless. Uh, so this is a slide that we see all the time. A bunch of bullets just on a on a slide. Sure. Kind of boring, you know, after you get to your 30th, 40th slide of this, the right. audience is pretty pretty well asleep. I just fell asleep right now with those four <laughs> bullets. Oh, see, now I'm awake. But here we go with a single click. What we've done is, is we've made this not only more colorful, but we've also made it easier to kind of parse and remember. So we used a bunch of AI here to both separate these things out, as well as even find icons that match that content. So now we've got icons that actually match exactly what you're talking about. And that shows, it's shown to make it easier for the audience to actually remember what you're talking about, which at the end of the day is the goal of a PowerPoint. And that's pretty amazing because I, that the picture bit was so subtle that I didn't even realize that it actually added those in, yeah. but it looked at the text and added the actual pictures. Right. Okay, so let's get into the engineering bit of it because I'm an AI person. Yeah. And as I'm looking <laughs> at this, it feels like it's a supervised problem, it's an unsupervised problem, it's a reinforcement learning problem, there's all sorts of AI. Can you describe the kinds of models that are being built? Absolutely. So one of the things that we wanted to do is to make the experience seem like magic, mm -hmm. you know, to the customer, but backing all of this is not just one, but multiple sets of models that are solving various problems. So if we go back to the image problem that Derek just showed, right? Um, can, can you switch back? There it is. Let's bring it up. Right? The black hole. Really cool. Let me even show you four photos just to really drive this point home. I love this. How much time and how many clicks does it take for a user to get to a slide like this when you drop in a bunch of photos like I, that? I feel like you did that way <laughs> too fast because <laughs> like, I just started thinking about how cool the faces of astronomy is right. versus like you actually just put four pictures in there and then it was right. it was done. Which is so great, right. right? Because we want the focus of our customers to be on the content and not on how they'd lay it out or how would they tell the best stories. So for example, with pictures, uh, some of the work that we do is with facial recognition. We know that there are faces. Uh, we have a model that tells us where the faces are located so we don't crop 
the photos incorrectly right. and we actually center them. Uh, we also detect salient regions in our images to position them the best way possible in the slide layout. So that's just an example of the image AI that uh, we're doing. Uh, there's another really interesting model that uh, looks at the uh, image and does a multi-class um, a, a multi-label classifier that says this is a logo, this is a screenshot, this is a chart or a table, and we can do different kinds of treatments uh, based on that. Uh, as so basically, well. like what what I would be doing as a human, yes. Except for we have AI, because like when I whenever we look at pictures, as humans, we're automatically drawn to faces, right. and right. so we're we know that intentionally, so we're able to use AI to do that. Yes. There was one interesting bit though that I saw. That was interesting because I'm I'm a vision guy. I like computer yeah. vision. I'm good at that. But I noticed, like you said, that you were able to pull icons out. So I'm assuming there's some kind of NLP yes. going on. Yes, Tell us there about that. is. So that that's actually the next problem I was going to talk about is being able to analyze your text. Um, and we have to a couple of different kinds of models. Here's another interesting one. Derek. Yeah, I mean, I mean, <clears throat> you're right, dead on with NLP. So yes. not only looking at what you're doing, <laughs> in this case, let me just undo it because it happens so fast, it's hard to even tell what's happening. Right. We've got a slide here where people have put a list of dates and they're trying to get a timeline across. This isn't a very effective way of getting someone to remember it. So automatically, designer can use the NLP tech we have and all of the layout tech that we have to determine that this was actually a set of dates and it can lay it out in this really visual way. And this is how people understand looking at dates. Of course, I mean, that's really cool. Yeah, so like just to give you an example, two of our text-based NLP models like you called out. So one of them is this, which we use the slide text to actually determine what kind of uh, textual body is this mm -hmm. from its structure. Is it a timeline? Is it a process? And so one of the, those models helps us do that, and then we match it with the right kind of graphic or smart art, and then we offer those up as suggestions. That's really cool. Uh, the other one that we showed with icons, this is my personal favorite. I just love how people's eyes light up yeah. when, when they, they're like, how did it find that icon that matches my text? Let me show you something cool, though, because you know, yeah. one of the things with AI is people often ask us, well, what happens when you get it wrong? And right. AI is not going to be perfect. Right. And we have to design for a world where AI gets you most of the way there. But at the end of the day, the user kind of needs to be in the control. Sure. So if we find one that's not right, all we have to do is, uh, is just select the one that we don't like and say, maybe this, this camera is not exactly what we had in mind. And we'll be able to get the next recommendations that the AI system had. So maybe this is a better representation of photo. That's cool. Now, it's cool not only because we've got the right icon, but we've just provided training data back to our ML systems. Yeah. So now we know we got it wrong before, and we're getting all of this signal, and we've got hundreds of millions of users. So this is a way for us to really get this AI to become smarter and smarter. So let's get into the engineering, because now yeah. I'm, I'm, that I'm getting a sense of what's going on, yeah. you must be training dozens and dozens of different models at the same time. That probably yeah. takes a lot of time. Yes. Absolutely. So, I mean, some of the ones that we talked about, this is just a subset of right. everything that's powering designer behind the scenes. Um, and this one in particular takes the text and develops a recommendation model to give a ranked list by confidence of icons that are matched. And like Derek was saying, we're constantly retraining all of this, all of our models with uh, user interactions mm -hmm by t them telling us what worked, what didn't, and having that um, the models learn from Absolutely. it all. Yeah. I love that you're like you're <clears throat> you're interacting with the AI because here's some design ideas. Right. You're in the space of like, look, you're you're using our AI now. Yeah. Which one of them do you like right. this? Do you like that? Do you not like this? Which right. is really cool. So I understand Azure Machine Learning just came out a couple of months ago. Right. You all are in the process of moving over. Mm -hmm. Can you like we won't tell anybody, just a couple of our friends. Because <laughs> yeah. you work in the office group, tell yeah. us a little bit about what that experience has been like and what are some of the improvements that you've seen. And feel free to be as technical as you want. Yeah, absolutely. So prior to using uh, Azure ML, uh, a lot of the model training work was being done locally or through using you know tools that were internal. 
and i think a lot of the data scientists had gotten used to the the tediousness that came with you know training large sets waiting for really long hours going and begging for yeah. machines they're expensive machines yeah they are very <laughs> expensive you want machines. Machines. Right? Yeah. and then so my manager for example had has some of these really uh, awesome gpus that you know people would be just be waiting to be like can i yeah. please please it's have like these old school like when i was right. in school i had to wait for my supercomputing time yeah you got a barter for three it. and four in the morning yeah, yeah. Right, but as our mo the number of models scaled and you know the models got more complex with DNNs, multi-layer DNNs, mm -hmm. we soon realized that this wasn't going to be scalable, and and so timing was great mm -hmm. with AML showing up, and uh, so our data scientists are now starting like, and now they're able to put their data into the data lake, mm -hmm. distributed compute over. GPUs that you know their eyes literally lit yeah, up very excited, yeah. when they saw uh, that uh, capability, and I think it just increases the throughput of uh, the data scientists tremendously and makes their work-life balance a lot better. Yeah. So, if you could say one feature that has stood out for you all when you've been using Azure Machine Lear Learning Service, what has it been for your data scientists and for you when you used it? Uh, so right now we've been using it for two models, one for one of the text as smart art recommendation mm -hmm. models and another for uh, one of our image classification mm -hmm. models. And I think the biggest one has been to be able to, you know, the distributed GPU mm -hmm. computing, like just send it out there and then wait for Magic the results right. to, to come back while they can go work on something else at the same time. And it's not monopolizing your machine entirely. Yeah, I mean, we're trying to do a lot of crazy things. Right. And a lot of them fail. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the ML world. You try a lot of things out, not all the models work. So to be able to run five, ten Multiple. models at a time is going to help us as a business keep up. That's I think amazing. that's really important to us. So let's talk about how are people reacting to this, number one. What's the future? Well, I mean, obviously, there's yeah, yeah. tons of stuff that you're going to be thinking about doing in the future. How are people reacting? Yeah, I mean, so one of the things that we see is, is people are paying a lot of high-end designers to create great presentations, and we want to learn from those techniques. We want to learn how to help people craft better storylines. So we showed you a bunch of examples of creating great slides. Some of the things we want to go out next is how do we create a great presentation? Sure. How do I help the storyline come together, add motion, more content? So that's you're going to see a I lot see. more coming through here in that, that kind of regard. And that's cool because right now it looks like most of the AI is in the slide, but now yes. you're looking at right. next slide type You've of thing. Yeah. See? That's exactly. why I get paid the medium to small dollars. With the good news. So how are people reacting? Are they liking it? Yeah, let me, you know, I, I would think we should show you some of the reactions that we get on Twitter that uh, you know we're really excited to see people really resonate with what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of these are great examples where it, it talks about people's perception of AI is not PowerPoint to start. And we're really excited to kind of see people realize that this is what AI can look like for an everyday user. Um, and they just keep coming. So you know it's <laughs> really exciting cool. every day to look at how people are using it. And this spans everything from consumers to, to students uh, to people in enterprises that just want to get their work done and go home. That's amazing. So it's not all about the killer robots, friends. No, no. <laughs> it's about the killer presentation. It yes. Is. Do you like how I wrapped <laughs> that up? I, I do. I Thank love you. it. Too. Well, it's awesome. Thanks so much for spending Absolutely. some time with us, Derek Priyanka. You've been learning all about the PowerPoint designer and the dozens, nay millions. I don't know if it's millions. It is. It's 4.1 <laughs> million a day, and that's almost 48 a second. Holy cow. So that's how many people are using it. That's yeah. how many slides every single day uh, that we're designing on behalf of people. So. You like how he snuck that in. Thanks so much, yeah. Derek. Thanks so much, Priyanka. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. This has been another episode of The AI Show. See you later.